TBN Finnegan Show, episode number 49. Can we talk now? Yes. Uh, you are, I can tell, in an exceptionally good mood, and maybe it's because you have a little Christmas cheer behind you uh, in the form of, what are those, LED lights on a uh, fake plant? It's Christmas plant. Christmas plant is back in action. <laughs> I genuinely love Christmas. I left these Christmas lights on this plant all year long, and now I finally get to plug them back in. Because we're in November. If you go to the Hallmark Channel, it's nothing but Christmas movies anyway. So Christmas. They started already. I noticed on Sirius the other day that, uh, I don't know, what Channel 4 or something, they're already playing the, the Christmas music. But I did not realize that all year you've had lights on that god-awful plastic plant, and you just were resisting the urge to plug them in. Uh, every now and then, like I work at night a lot. I applaud I'll, your restraint. Sometimes I'll plug him in just to have a little <laughs> cheer in the office. It's amazing what a little string of lights can do. It just brightens up a room. We use them at home. Like as you get to know the Kibby clan here, you can go to anybody with my last name or related to me. I promise you in their house, Christmas lights are lighting in at least one room. Year, at all times. Year round. My older sister probably has Christmas lights on her porch on year round. She lives <laughs> in a, awesome. she's also a pretty good bartender too. She's, she's a fun person to get to know. Anyway. Older or younger sister? It's the first I've heard of her. I didn't even know you had a sister. I have two. Older yeah. sister Jen and younger sister April. How old are they? Let's see. I'm 42. So Jennifer is 47. April's 39. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. How old? Did either of them beat you up when you were like a kid? Jennifer did, and she was, she was, and may still be a little bit taller than me. When I was a kid, she was really tall, you know, relative to me. But she seems to be shrinking, <laughs> and I'm I'm catching up now. But yeah, she uh, she was the first one. She was a little bit of like a rebel without a cause. Uh, she had my Nova, my '76 Nova, was originally bought for her. It was her. 16 year old like welcome to the world of responsibility present so she got a 76 nova and then she wrecked it twice and then i got what was left of it and that was my high high school school kids do yeah wait a minute so welcome to responsibility here's a free car it was it wasn't a very good car yeah but still i remember yeah i played sports growing up and then when i wanted a car I said, Dad, I want a car. He said, get a job. And I don't think he thought I'd quit sports, but I did. And that just flushed most of my life down the toilet because I stopped playing sports, started bagging groceries, grades went in the toilet. All I did was work to pay the insurance and buy stuff for that car. And, uh, you know, there were probably 20 years went by before, you know, the black sheep of the family finally got a respectable job in the automotive industry. And finally, my dad was like, all right, you're not a total screw up. (laughs) Yeah, it took 20 years, but you finally got it right. <laughs> so your older sister beat you up or your younger sister? No, I beat my younger sister up. Uh, so that, it's kind of similar at my house. I have an older sister mm-hmm. who um, whooped my So then I turned around and whooped my brother's who was four years younger than me, and then he told on both of us. But at some point, my brother just started growing and became the six five wiry Finnegan monster that he is now. And then started taking jujitsu. Jujitsu. Yeah, and oh. I stopped messing with my uh, younger brother. <laughs> I, I, I think he is a very if, tall man. He's, oh, he's, he is. And, he and was probably lanky younger. I'll bet. I'll bet he's kind of filled out. You know, as he's gotten older. But I'll bet he was he kind of wiry. Oh yeah, don't. But don't you don't mess with him now. At least that's what I used to think. So uh, yesterday, yesterday he had jujitsu, and my youngest son, who's six has started taking it and he usually goes with his uncle Brian and I went, I was in town. So I took him yesterday and my brother was there. His daughter was there. So the three of them are out on the mat, you know, learning jujitsu moves for like an hour. And right at the end, they do this thing called rolling and rolling is where you actually put into practice against somebody else, everything you've learned. And you know, you wear the thing, it's called a gi and it's like a coat with a belt and everything. Well, my brother is rolling with this other student and the other student grabs the lapels of the gi and starts choking out my brother. 
And when you tap out, they stop, right? Is, is the other student brother. like an eight-year-old kid or what, what do you – like how long no, do you take jujitsu lessons? I, just, I don't Lifelong know. thing? Yeah. This is probably the second time I've ever shown up to watch, right? But I'm watching all this and I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, this is kind of cool, you know? Like I kind of want to take this, right? And two seconds later, my brother's getting choked out by another student. And the other student is using nothing more than the lapels of my brother's coat to choke him. And he turns blue, and I'm thinking, all right, he's going to tap, except he's not tapping. And before I can snap my fingers, my brother's out like a light and convulsing on the floor and foaming at the mouth. And I'm like, screw this noise. I'm not ever taking (laughs) (laughs) And he came back around, right, like almost immediately. He was out, and then he came back around, but class stopped. You know, it was, you know, not a normal thing because you're just, you know, you're not in an actual – you know, street fighter competition or whatever. This is just practice. But, uh, you know, my brother, man, that was rough. Is and, this, uh, is he just competitive? Could he not tap out? Cause he was blacking out. What's the, oh, he's, he's like me, he's competitive, but he also thought he had more time before he would black out. You know, he's been going for a while. So he, he, I think he knows his body well enough to know, or at least he thought he knew his body well enough to know when he needed to tap. And he was trying to get out of the choke hold. And he just didn't get out quick enough and, you know. Oh, so he, 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 he thought and... he would be able to. It's like if you're in wrestling, the guy on the bottom always thinks they have the upper hand if they can just get their legs around the other guy to spin him. Um, so he, he was waiting for that move and he just uh, blacked out <laughs> and nearly yeah, died he woke first. up and was like, what happened? <laughs> and I'm like, you were purple. That's what happened. <laughs> do, do they, does he uh, like have script on his... His gi? Does it say Doc Finnegan or uh, anything like that? Oh, like his name? No. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't think he's. You know, we're we're or, not to like the Karate Kid level yet. Like, like Madge. You know, nobody's or... putting nobody in a body bag. Nobody's sweeping the leg. Um, and obviously, wrong discipline, wrong sport. But I think it applies here. We've not reached that level. He's still like, you know, a young Danny. What's his name? I'm trying to find his way in the uh, martial arts world. Danny. Wasn't his name Danny? Which one? The Which, Ralph Danny? Ralph Macchio or yeah, the other the bad guy? Name? The character, the, the the good guy, Ralph Macchio. Guy from K- Beer League. Karate Kid. Uh, yeah, who was his name? Dave? Dave? Danny? That, that didn't sound right. God, I don't know. The movie's like 30 years old. I don't remember. There's it. another one coming out. We talked about this uh, at SEMA. Yeah, that's a bad idea. We did talk about this at SEMA. Yeah, oh, it? dude. you ever? Okay, do you ever really... So, the Karate Kid was like... You know, the kid from the wrong side of the tracks, just trying to stick up for himself, you know, get the girl, make his way through high school, that whole thing. Yeah. If you ever really pay attention to the Karate Kid, Daniel, that's his Daniel, name. Daniel, I just looked it up. Daniel. Daniel's a douchebag. He is kind of really get right down to it, Daniel starts all the fights, right? Well, Daniel loses his cool on the soccer field. Daniel's sure. the he one have, that gets parents? everybody wet in the bathroom. Daniel starts all the fights in the Karate Kid. What, was he a, an only child? Why Why was he living with Pat Morita? He wasn't. He, he wasn't? Pat Morita was like the neighbor, you know. Boy, it's been a while. So he did... lived with his mom in like the apartment complex. They just moved into town and uh-huh. stuff, and he had to change schools and all that. And he was a frustrated young guy who just could not – keep his cool in situations at all so as it turns out like we've all thought for 30 years like daniel was the good guy and in the end he triumphed no daniel was a douchebag that's what was going on still got elizabeth's shoe though temporarily remember she ditched his butt oh. beginning of the second karate kid she was out of there she crashed his car once again he loses his cool i am not up to speed on my karate kid knowledge by the next go show, back and watch it i'll get there go back and watch it open your peeps and you realize that what you thought 30 years ago was all wrong. What I remember was wax on, wax off of the yellow convertible Buick or whatever it was. Could have been the same mm-hmm. car that was in Back to the Future. And the the, the crane, obviously. Uh, which you think is, that works in real life? The crane? Yeah, do you think you can post up on one leg and just hover there for a second and nobody's going to do anything to you from behind, from the side, from the top I, I think long we, enough for you to kick them in the face? I don't know if it was a real move or not, but I guarantee you people, are when they see that one coming, they just do the old pull out the gun and shoot him. And... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, in today's world, this just doesn't work. Pretty much everyone's strapped, and uh, you're either getting shot or shanked. That's Your right. Brain move is uh, no good here. My sister's car was a 76 Nova. It was bought at the second-hand version of the used Pontiac dealer in Ames. They had a small lot, and it was $999. I remember that day. I remember going to get it. What did she get ripped off? What year was that? It was 10 years old. It was 1986. In 86, she paid a grand for that car? Yeah. And it had hubcaps off of a 59 Plymouth. Of course it did. It did. $999. They came to a point, and like, uh, they're like, no, 57. They're the same hubcaps that are on Christine. That one. That's the same year as my first car. I had a 76 Camaro. I know this. And in the last episode, when you mentioned that, I thought, wait a minute. Is there some other distant, you know, meant to be connection here? Yes. Because the 76 Nova and a 76 Camaro have a whole lot in common. Was it beige? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, it was. My fire. Camaro was spooge colored. Firethorn red is the color was and rust. That was the so, car I learned a bootlegger in. I went through two rear ends, three motors, two transmissions. I broke the calipers um, practicing my, my 180s. Did you lose your front. virginity in that car? Because I did my Camaro. I did not. Okay. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, are we clear here? Because I don't... It got real awkward. No, it's... Between I think we're all good. good. Anyway, you can uh, find the show on iTunes iHeartRadio, Google Play, for now, um, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> and we're really glad you're here. This is our this is our uh, post SEMA show. So we uh, we went to the SEMA show. We actually found each other. I was walking in trying to find my last appointment of the day, and I saw you standing there, like, oh my god, there's Mike. And then you said, hey, let's go out and have some beers. So we did that. I wish we'd have done that more. That was nice. That was a nice break. Yeah, every, it was. Every, it was a nice hotel. We had beers at the Wynn. That I, I've never. I realized when we were walking the line, I've never been here before, ever. The Wynn is a nice place. Well, we were. You know, we weren't. I wasn't staying at the Wynn. <clears throat> no. Um, but I went there for the buffet, which kicked ass. Let me tell you. I didn't know there was a buffet either. The, yeah. the bu- I was surprised that a place with floors that shiny would have a buffet. But when you eat the buffet, you realize it's on par with the floors. I mean, all different kinds of seafood and uh, the desserts. Whew, man. I, I guess it would be whenever I think of buffet in Vegas, I think of the only buffet I've ever been to in Vegas, which was like a $6 steak special. Like everybody gets a steak and then you go up to the buffet, which is what you think of as a buffet, like a salad bar line. Yeah, this is the opposite of that. Yeah, it sounds like, like a lot of foods I couldn't pronounce the name of. And, like, I mean, it was ridiculous. Like, I don't like sushi, but if you were into sushi, they had a, a its own sushi buffet. And oh, did it? I really like it. Seafood buffet. I have some sushi then, from uh, from the high V here sitting in the, the fridge. I, have some of that I like my food dead. Well, it's dead. Warm. It's not alive. Warm dead. Oh, well. Uh, so here, here's what I was going to kind of run by you today. Had, okay. had some questions for you. Being the, the, the automotive celebrity that you are. Even your dad <laughs> says, Mike, I was wrong. You are a big deal. Here's what I learned this week at SEMA. Did he say that? <laughs> uh, I'm sure he would. <laughs> he's, he's proud of you. I know, I know he's very proud of you. I know that, that for a fact. Uh, but here, here's what I, I found. Number one. Our, uh, but by the way, our most popular picture on the Kibbe and Finnegan Instagram page is the picture of the two of us right before we went to the bar. So, mental note, we need to go to the bar more together and take a picture before we do that. Yeah. Hopefully that was all liked by ladies and not a bunch of dudes. I don't know. Laura posted it for me, though. She's helpful. Uh, but at SEMA, I either spoke with a company, because I was there doing event coverage for... My other show, The Muscle Car Place. Did lots and lots of different interviews. Most of them good. A couple of duds that we'll delete. But for all the enthusiasts and fans, freaking every other dude I talked with is either trying to get a show or 
has a show in the bag with Discovery, Velocity, 10, Power Auto Media, you name it. it just, I'm like, what the is going on here? They all have one. <laughs> what am I missing? It's a video world, man. It is. Well, here's my question for you. In in this day and age, though, there's there's um the barrier to entry to make your own show, be it be it a, a really good YouTube show or a really good podcast, is pretty much gone. And let's just say, for argument's sake, that you have the ability on your own to produce TV or radio quality stuff. Are you still more impressed if if it ends up on TV? And I think I think most people would say that they are. And I'm, I'm scratching my head why, but m- mostly it must be because it's it's the gatekeeper of it. You know, getting on to TV or getting on to broadcast radio is still got to go through some channels that you don't directly have control over. And you, yeah, it's hard. It's definitely harder. But it, it's a lot like modern day drag racing, professional drag racing. If you have money and you can make it yourself, you're in there. You know, like if you want to, if you want to drive top fuel. You get a license, you call up Don Schumacher and go, I have $3 million in sponsorship dollars, and he will lease you a program, you know, a pit crew, uh, engine program, a car. Yep. Um, that, the, and, uh, any racing the same, series. Uh, the same goes with making a show. Just go out and make the show yourself and then find someone to distribute it, you know, whether it's YouTube or Amazon Prime. Like, dude, they'll put your show on there. I do know that there's some um, real crap there. Oh, what's uh, what's the one with Ray Evernham? I don't know. I don't have cable. Uh, Americana. He he does it all himself. Um, all of it. They just buy the. I don't. So you can buy time on TV, or you can get time in exchange for ad rates or something like that. In his yeah, case, there's a lot of people buying time on TV. Like there's a show that Brian Fuller does. <clears throat> that's kind of geared around a local car show it's called caffeine and octane Mm -hmm. and they buy the time um and then make the show that they want to make and put it on there so no one's you know there's less network control over it yeah yeah i i have a feeling that in five years and probably way less the differentiation between online only and broadcast is is just going to be gone i really do it probably happens sooner than that because today's and I'm well I'm going to caveat that because their TV how they want it when they want it they don't want to wait on a schedule so I'm I think saying that the a automotive lot of world. television networks are going to be rapidly changing the way they do business not I, completely but yeah I I I think the automotive world and well no this is a definite fact automotive media is always behind the times of how people get their content it it is kind of always been that way, so I think like I mean most of the friends I have here just in Iowa don't have any TV service of any kind. They have an internet connection. And that's it. I think what you're gonna find is you're gonna see the only things on a schedule going forward are live sports and news, um, or mm-hmm. anything that's timely up to the hour. Um, other than that, I think you're gonna see a lot of people just finally giving in and giving you your whole season of whatever sitcom you want and mm-hmm. letting, letting you binge watch it. What show would you make? Uh, so you got, you got t- two internet shows going and then one hilariously awesome podcast, which was well received <laughs> at SEMA, by the way, lots of people came up and said, hello, it was, it was really kind of cool. Mm-hmm. What, if you were going to make one more new show, is there any idea you have for the, the dream show you want? Would you ever play a character, not be Mike Finnegan? Uh, no, I can't act. God, I can't act. I bet you could. There's been, there's been, I can count on one hand the number of moments throughout the six year history of Roadkill where the camera was off or we did something when we shouldn't have and I had to go do it again, you know, say something to camera. And uh, it, it was really awkward. <laughs> and you could probably tell uh, when it came out on YouTube that, you know, okay, this guy can't act. So, Ooh, no, there's Mike, no character. Go do your zinger that. again. Oh, yeah. Uh... Okay. There's no character. I don't know. Um, Rectum. I barely know. <laughs> um, it was funny. I don't know. You know. You know what I would say is there's there isn't a show I necessarily want to do, but there's things I want to build that I can't necessarily build on Roadkill. Like what? Um, I, there's just things that um, you know, they don't fit the Roadkill mold in terms of budget 
um, they don't fit the production schedule in terms of time. And so I've just I've just got bucket list vehicles that I want to build and drive and maybe not even necessarily own. Um, and uh, well, what's one? If there was a show that enabled me to do that, I would be interested in it. What like what's an example? So Aaron Kaufman, you know, from Fast and Loud, that was mm-hmm. basically his reason to one of his big reasons to get out. I assume the other big reason is he just got sick of putting up with people's BS. But he wanted to build which people? Uh, Dave Rawlings. Why I keep thinking Dave, Rich, Richard Rawlings. I'm guessing Richard was one of the people. Although the flip side is I've heard Richard is nice. I've heard conflicting stories, but he he wanted to build better quality, you know, longer time frame builds. Cars take a long time to build and build well. They just do. Mm-hmm. Even when you do it right, they take a long time. They're labor intensive. So that was I think his his biggest reason to exit. I mean, you just did a project with Rutledge and Casey Matau, Matthew, Matthew. Is that how it's spelled? No, nah, it's spelled, you know, okay. French. I, I know Casey, I've, I've heard through the grapevine. I don't know him. You know him, that, you know, he, he would probably agree that there's TV is, is not real time, you know, for people that are true car builders. So you tell me what I've, I'm totally in. What, what would you build? What's well, the... from what I understand, um, especially talking with Casey, um, I, I don't know, Aaron, um, but Casey had told me that they were working like seven days a week, 20 hours a day to build those cars on the TV schedule. I believe it. And so that, I mean, I have no interest in that. Um, and, you know, between you, me and the audience and whoever's listening, I filmed a what's called a sizzle reel once um i don't know about six months ago and it was basically kind of um i think you, you know, told 10 us minute deal yeah did yeah I? blasphemy was in it yeah did we ever talk about that on this uh yeah i, I, I don't remember very well but i i do I remember know. discussing well if we, if we talked about it on air cut it out but um well you know just to reiterate the, reiterate the time point um that sizzle reel was like a 10 minute kind of commercial of what a tv show could look like if we me and my friends got together and started building cars that were similar to blasphemy yeah and we spent three days working with a film crew and in that three days we took the supercharger on and off the engine blasphemy we took the tilt front end on and off and we took the exhaust on and off and then a couple of small things on a different car that ate three days most of these tv shows they want filmed in seven or eight days total Mm -hmm. so I don't care how big your army of people is behind the scenes. You're not building blasphemy in seven or eight days. It ain't happening, you know? No. So, and if that's, you know, obviously that's kind of, that's the kind of car I'm interested in. So it's not sustainable, I think, in a traditional, you know, cable television format to build the kind of stuff that I'm interested in. So uh, that's kind of my answer to your question is, yeah, there's cars I want to build and I just don't think it's possible. You know the show I would do? We're two buddies BS talking cars and review movies. That's probably what I would do. I thought you were going to say cheers. <laughs> I would also do cheers. I mean, just sit at a bar all day <laughs> drinking. You could talk about cars. I would enjoy that. I would also do a, uh, I've always kind of wanted to do like a, a stunt driving show where you learn a different stunt every week or you try to put on a different stunt show every week or something like that. I don't know, stuff like that. That'd be cool. Here's other stuff that I learned at SEMA. Um, Did you happen to see the 69 Charger that the Ring Brothers brought in the BASF booth? Did you get a chance to even go buy it? The green one? Mm Mm-hmm. I I know about the car, but I I didn't see hardly anything at SEMA. Okay. So I didn't get to go look at that one up close. I I can give you the just... uh, I mean, they're the Ring Brothers. They're from Wisconsin. You know, small-town dudes. They, They, by choice, run a collision repair shop that also builds cars and they have their brand name and they build some parts they work 40 hours a week they do two three builds a year at the most by choice they could do more they could go big um they just don't want to but the cars that they bring are always full tilt cars that they're really proud of so this 69 charger was their very first mopar turns out they built it for a european client the typical mo of their build is that the client sees it for the first time ever at sema when the sheet comes off it they usually don't even have project updates as it's going. That's just, fun. It and they're dude. I'm telling you, they're legit 
good old boys. I mean, they're, I, I love, I look forward to the interview with them every year. I always make a point to schedule it with them this year. And when they brought three cars this year, and this is the one I wanted was the 69 charger, but it's the, the least ring brothers car ever. And also the most ring brothers car ever. So when you look at it, for some reason, it looks like a lowered 69 charger and the proportions are right, but you know, something's a little different. So what they did is they grafted in, they took a Detroit speed, um, front and rear suspension subframe on the nose and, you know, the quadrilink on the tail and they grafted that in, they moved the, uh, the wheel arches forward on the front. So, you know, basically to make the suspension all legit in the rear. But as they did that, they saw like the proportions of this car are totally wrong now. So they chopped two inches out of the tail. And it, when you see yeah, it, they effectively shortened the leading edge of the front fender. So they had to shorten the trailing edge of the yep. rear fender. And then, then the wheel arches on the rear got bigger. And I think the front ones then later got a little bit bigger to match. So when you see it, the proportions are correct, but you know, it's, it's a little bit weird, but pop the hood. And other than the crate 392 Hemi under there, it looks bone stock. It has a stock grill in it. It has 19 inch wheels on it with Dodge hubcaps and the hubcaps are proportionally larger for the 19 inch wheels, but it looks normally stock. It has a black vinyl top on it. You look inside and you, you can tell, well, the transmission tunnel is raised and has a 408 E in it. That's why it's raised, but it kind of has stock looking seats. Um, this car looks totally normal to me, but every nut bolt and detail has been addressed in some way, shape or form somehow, somewhere. And I really ended up liking it. And I, at first I didn't like it because I'd, I kind of don't like people messing with the lines of a 68 or 69 charger. They're, they're sacred. They're supposed to be normal, but they, they made it look cool. Um, they extended the rockers full length. So it runs, you know, from the, the rear wheel arch all the way to the front wheel arch. And that, and that's not normal because normally on a 69 charger that, you know, it stops the fender because the fender comes totally off. There's no rocker under there. In this case, there mm-hmm. is. They extended that down. Then they built uh, the fender, you know, on the front side of the wheel down to match. And they built the quarter on the rear side of the wheel down to match. So the whole car looks taller, yet it's much lower and it's all proportionally correct. That was my favorite car of the show, mostly because of the attention to detail that they did. Um, the spinners, though, I mean, it's just the littlest things, Mike. The spinner, the Dodge spinner in the hubcap was how you remove the hubcap. It's a knockoff. You then you can take it off and then you can get to the five lug wheel that's behind it. But that was my favorite thing at the show. Oh, also Bernie got recognized a lot at the show. Like when I show up and people say, Hey, oh, when he was talking, people heard him. Oh, I'd say, Hey, this is Bernie. They go, Oh my God, you're Bernie. Bernie got a big head too. Big head. He was thinking, yeah, man, we can't afford it? him anymore. No, we can't. Uh, he took pictures with people. Kevin, Kevin, this is legit. Uh, I have a picture of Kevin wearing an FSM zip tie t-shirt. And Bernie, giving him the thumbs up. He told me to go to hell. Kevin did. The Ring Brothers car, you said you interviewed them. Mm-hmm. What was the uh, price tag for the build? They never tell you, but I don't know. Seven figures? Six figures? I, I know they've built one. Well, I guess I don't have it confirmed, but I'm pretty sure they've built one car that was a seven-figure car. I wouldn't be surprised. But then you meet the dudes, and I mean, the, they're just... Other than a nice shirt, they're, they're those guys go so far. I mean, right down to printing their own like stickers for the core support. You know, they do. I yeah. mean, they're yeah, they build really nice stuff. That that is what I did at SEMA. And if you want to hear any of the interviews, please go listen to the Muscle Car Place podcast. Uh, but a couple other things that I wanted to run by you here that um, that have kind of come to my attention. Uh, in the past, we've, we've had this discussion about our show listeners. There's a 50, 50 battle of people that liked the witty banter that we do back and forth here where we seemingly go to random topics because we do (laughs) or the Hollywood stuff review. And it was like 50, 50. So we've just kind of kept the format. Now the battle is to the people who want more Dukes reviews or less Dukes reviews. Um, and the people who want less Dukes reviews are sending in their, their movie requests, like by the droves. Do you know what the very next movie request is, uh, that I have approved? 
and it's a timely thing. How would I know? No, (laughs) I don't get these emails. I'll bet you can figure it out based on the time of year. What do you think a a movie might be? Vacation. No, or you're you're too early or too late. Oh, Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving special. Can I play you a hint? Sure. All right, let's see if we can get this here. Dell. Oh. Oh. Why did you kiss my ear? Why are you holding my hand? Where's your other hand? Between two pillows. Those aren't pillows. <laughs> that will be our thing. Strains and automobiles. Yes, that God, we're I miss John Candy. We are reviewing that in two weeks. Sweet. Um, it's funny you mention how they want less Dukes and more movie reviews. That's great because. I was literally watching the episode of Dukes of Hazard that we're supposed to be reviewing as we started this uh, podcast. And, uh, yeah, I was only halfway through it. So you're going to be doing the heavy lifting on this one. We got a small problem there, pal. I have, in my defense. <laughs> I have not I, touched it. I hadn't been home in three weeks. I just got home from SEMA. I'm getting on a plane tomorrow morning to leave again for, you know, God, two more weeks of uh, filming. So, um, yeah, it's been hard to, like been hard to podcast we tried to podcast from my hotel room a couple of times during the last shoot for roadkill and it didn't work out no oh, we we have had a rough go as of late it's so nice to talk to hey look around the place you're in that's your house uh that's <laughs> it's this this it works so much better this way it doesn't work when when you're traveling so uh, i'm home all. so little these days that um I don't do yard work. When I get home, it's the last thing I'm doing is mowing my lawn, right? So, you know, we hire someone to take care of the yard. And I was so happy to be home today that, you know, it's fall and uh, the trees had just dumped all the leaves that I uh, I borrowed my next door neighbor's rake because I don't own one. And I started raking up the leaves, put them in a big pile, let my kids jump in it, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's how excited I was to be home. <laughs> that's – you got to be pretty excited. Here's what I did today. Got up, went to church, came back home, uh, blew the gutters out three quarters of the way, came to work, met my buddy who had our construction trailer full of water-based roofing materials that we unload, unloaded all those, dumped the trailer, unloaded the back of the truck because it was full of equipment, put it all in warm storage, went back home, finished blowing the gutters, Came here, started getting ready for this, realized I had no recorder, went home, got the recorder, came back, hooked it up, and now we're talking. I want to ask you a favor. Let's hear it. Small favor. But going forward, if you could do me this kindness and just refrain from using the phrase, blow in the gutters, <laughs> that would be awesome. Thank you. I can't, because that's what you got to do. You have to blow I don't want to know how often you're blowing the gutters, all right? <clears throat> Twice or in the fall. what part of town you're hanging out in. Twice in the fall, you blow the gutters. Here are the other movies <laughs> that have made the top top five list here. Top six, top eight. Airplane. That has been a repeated request. Over Macho Grande? No, I'm no. sure it'll never get over Macho Grande. Someone's running. That's Airplane 2, I think. Excited to Another do that. For... Top Secret. Christmas Vacation. Dirty Larry, Crazy Mary, because Corndog will just not drop it. So we're going to do that one. Super Fast. Movie. Have you seen Super Fast? This is a comedic spoof of Fast and Furious. I think I started watching it once and got distracted, or it sucked. I don't remember which, but I'll, I'll watch it again. I, I've Neither. I, I would like to check it out. Uh, Pitch Perfect. That's just Yeah, funny. I'm not watching that. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. There's no that. cars, right? Isn't it about chicks singing? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Look at you here. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> I celebrate the whole Pitch Perfect catalog, because there's like two or three of those pieces of crap, aren't there? They're not crappy. They're really good. The third one's coming out here shortly. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, did you see Baby Driver? What? Did you see Baby Driver? No. You haven't? No. You, 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 need, you need to get that done. Dude, the last movie I saw. I don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Baby Driver is something you need to check out. I uh, You will enjoy that. The driving is awesome, but I know you like music. And this movie is music to motion. It, and it's freaking great music too. Yeah. Uh, you will really, really enjoy it. All right. I'll watch if it. You can Maybe f- Delta has it on the airplane. I'll watch it tomorrow. Yeah. If you can find a way to get that done, you will enjoy it. I would like to do a couple emails here and then we have uh, HelloFresh hello fresh as our sponsor today that we, we really need to chat about here, but 
Here's an email from Connor. Connor says, Dear Rob and Mike, I couldn't help but think that uh, since the Dukes of Hazard used 68 to 70 chargers, could they have possibly used a Charger Daytona for a General Lee? I do know that they have different roof lines and at the end a different glass than regular chargers. I don't know if they would ever use a Daytona, but if anyone knows, it would be either you guys or Corn Dog. What they do you used th- a 70? I didn't know that. They didn't. Uh, so, Connor, here, here's what we know, and Corn Dog can correct here, but uh, no, there would have been no Daytonas used. And that wasn't because that they valued the Daytonas. It was because this is a TV production schedule. It was a turn and burn thing. They bought cars, they made them orange, they jumped them, they wrecked them. Uh, they, they would probably not invest the time to convert a Daytona into a generally. That's my yeah, guess. Yeah, that would have been a lot of sheet metal work. Daytona is, um, I'm pretty sure the entire front clip is a 70 charger. Like, the fenders are different. They're not 69 charger fenders. They're, I think they're 70 charger fenders. And but then, the, the back of that car, like the roof and the sail panels are different, right? The, well, the roof definitely is because it has a window plug in it to make the rear glass flush mounted. It's All not right. It's not recessed in. Those those would be the big changes. That I think that I think it had a different deck lid on it. That, there was a lot. It they wouldn't have done that. Um, no, it was too easy to convert a '68 or '69 Charger. And remember, these were five hundred dollar cars. That they well, think of it this way: doing um, a lot of those Chargers, they would go around the city and find them and try to buy pe- buy them from people off this street. Back in the day, the Superbird in Daytona, those things sat on car lots. Nobody was buying mm-hmm. those things. Those you things know. were used to haul wood. Have you, yeah. have you ever read those stories, like where some farmers just like got you know a bunch of lumber tied over the front and sitting on the wing? <laughs> yeah, like they're worth ridiculous amounts of money right now. But back in the day, the Superbird and the Daytona, those things sat on car lots. Dealers couldn't give them away because they were expensive, mm-hmm. and most people considered them not very attractive. So, well, that there that that's our answer to that, Connor. Uh, here, here's one more. This one is uh, from a young man in New Zealand, and he bought one of our shirts, one of our, generally speaking, awesome shirts. Uh, <laughs> I think he took the, the, the sticker off before it got washed. I felt bad for your shirt. I'll get you another one. I will. <laughs> <laughs> he says, hey, Robin, Mike, I thought you would appreciate a photo of the southern most Kibbe and Finnegan shirt in the world. Uh, I have just spent the last week with my grandfather in Oha- Ohakun. Uh, I think that's the city, immersed in classic British cars, which are Triumphs that we have. My great-grandfather worked at Triumph from 1944 to 1977. I guess Triumph oils in my veins. Thanks again for the great shirt. It was really an awesome birthday present for me. Best wishes, Grayson. Well, um, if you're interested in shirts, guess what? K-A-F, wait, Kibbe and Finnegosh, whatever the link is, (laughs) we sell shirts. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and they're really awesome. We have a Christmas one coming out. Uh, not not a joke. We, we really do. I had no idea. You're going to love it. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. But kafshowshirts.com. I'm, I think that's what it is. I got I to gotta put this stuff in the notes. I will look this up a, a little bit. But today's show is not brought to you so much by that, but by HelloFresh. Remember HelloFresh, Mike? Mm-hmm. Oh, the, yeah. This wonderful company that sends you meals in a box that are healthy, delicious, pre-prepared. Take less than 30 minutes, little to no expertise in anything, minimal supplies, they're back. Yeah, all you got to really know is how to cook without setting yourself on fire, and you can eat well. You can. So they are back here, back to sponsor another show. Hey, man, it's the holidays. Do you really think that your wife has time for you, much less during the holidays? You thought life was hectic before? It's about to get worse, bro. She comes home. You're home. Kids are screaming. She just needs a box with delicious foods (laughs) ready to cook. This may be my life right now. (laughs) Your wife just needs a box, huh? All right. HelloFresh has multiple multiple ways to get it. They have the classic box, the veggie box, the family box. Customers can order three, four, or five different meal plans per week. Let me me read to you some of this week's meal plans, and I'm, I'm pulling this up. So this is live. Uh, as of the week of November 4th. Okay, check this out. So this is the November 4th through November 10 meal option. They change these plans every single week. Crispy chicken, milanese. That's one option. Crushed peppercorn yeah. steak. That's an option mm-hmm. with cream kale and potato wedges. 
Turkey Chiles Relanos. Relanos? I'm saying that wrong. Sounds you delicious, though. The Pancetta Penne and Witch's Cauldron. Ooh, festive. I love it. Many, many different options, but you, what you got to do to get it is go to HelloFresh.com, and if you'd like to get $30 off your first week order, you put in a promo code. You'll never guess what the promo code is. You're right. I won't. Go ahead and KAFS30, Mike. <laughs> Just like you thought. KAFS30. <laughs> That's where you can get some of these delicious meals that are basically 10 bucks a meal. They have two registered dietitians on staff, and it all comes to your door in a recyclable insulated box. Oh, dude. They got a variety of boxes. I personally celebrate the whole catalog, every one of them. KAFS30. That's the code. Hello, Fresh. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for the meals. It's going to save my marriage. Okay, let's get to the Dukes of Hazard review. You're doing well. Can we not? <laughs> you're, you're doing. Hang in there, pal. We're, we're gonna get. We're gonna get through this. Okay. <laughs> I literally have one note. I can see your face. You're, you're as red I, as your shirt. You're. <laughs> I literally. Dude, Let me set it. this up for, because people count on I this have, show. They count on a little entertainment. They're stressed out. It's the holidays. Hello, fresh solving their problems, but they can only do so much. They're looking forward to the Mike Finnegan show review. This is season three, episode ten. Good neighbors, Duke. Little Ricky's at home thinking, "Oh, thank God I got Mike. I got my job that I hate so much, but he'll have the show summary I need." This. this All right, I'll, I'll keep it together. This premiered on January second, nineteen eighty one. Man, Jimmy Carter's nearly out of office here. He can't wait to hear your review. He's still kicking. Written by Len Kaufman. Directed by Dick Motor. Dick hasn't let us down. (laughs) Well, sometimes he has. (laughs) What's it? (laughs) Mike, what is your super show review? (laughs) Uh, Um... Dick Dick never would. Dick cares. Sometimes Dick has a mind of his own, and he just leaves the party. That you never know with that guy. Sometimes Dick never even shows up to the party. Sometimes he does not. It depends if he's had a little too much partying. I wonder if what you know anybody named Richard that goes by Dick. Do you? Um, No. I, I knew one guy, and uh, he was a, a like a World War II vet, like <coughs> that generation. And on purpose, he went by Dick? He did. Anyway, Dick great Motor show. went by Dick, and he wrote this great show. Let's have it. What's this show about? <laughs> you can't stall gather, forever. <laughs> from what I gather, <laughs> the Duke boys. Mm-hmm. Did they stop a crime? <laughs> Happen upon a pair of people... I believe are related and on the run from people they may or may not have stole diamonds from. Those people want the diamonds back. Jeez. <laughs> and at the 19 minute mark, Cletus opens up his wallet and it's a, a female's driver's license in there. And that's where I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> that's where my kids start yelling and crying. And my wife looked at me and was like, dude, please back me up. I know you got to work, but please help me bathe these children and put them to bed. The end. (laughs) I got nothing else. (laughs) And I'm getting on an airplane in like seven hours. We're never going to leave again. We're never going to make it. No, we are. (laughs) All right. I'm going to pick up the slack here. Now, I have seen... Less of this show than you, but I'm going to go on memory here of a lot of this. As I recall, so is there an old man and a daughter in it, and they're like in witness protection? Is that the gist of it? Yes. Oh, hey, good. Okay. (coughs) So they're in witness protection. They end up in hazard. Uh, Did they have diamonds in a Bugs Bunny doll? That's a different episode. I think that's Bugs Bunny. All right. Okay. I think in another episode, there's a Bugs Bunny doll that gets dropped with diamonds in it. That's not this one. So in this one, the the bad guys 
are trying to find this guy because he testified against somebody and they think that he has the diamonds that ended up missing that he testified about. That sounds plausible. Let's go with that. All right. Do we ever find... Well, you wouldn't know. I don't know. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I don't know if you had the diamonds. I don't know Not, if you found the diamonds. If there was a car chase at the end, which there usually is, I don't know what happened. You think I'm your sure man let it in? Dukes intervened, and everyone lived happily ever after. But as to what happened to the diamonds, I got nothing. Okay, don't feel bad. Corn dog mailed it in, too. You want to read his? hear his review? Sure. Okay. There wasn't a car. It was orange. <laughs> it's pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what he says. And I uh, he I texted him like a week ago and he goes, I just don't have anything. So here I said, nothing? And he goes, yeah, nothing. And then we started talking. The more we talked, he had something. So here's what he says. I watched this episode and pulled some screenshots, but would you believe that I've got nothing on Insider Info? It's a pretty good episode, though. It's just a regular run-of-the-mill one. Simple storyline, one big jump, nothing, nothing else. For the general ease using this episode, there was one stage car. There were two first unit cars in the driving scenes and at least three second unit cars. One of those was the jump car. Another one did a soft jump and that would have gone on to, to be used again. Here's where it gets good though, Mike. The, be, be ready. I have noticed that the stage car has the Radio Shack Archer 21-940A CB antenna which has a round magnetic base instead of the regular Radio Shack Archer 21-908A, obviously, teardrop antenna. Uh -oh. The teardrop. We all noticed that. Everybody. Did. And now that when you see it, like, it's huge. I think that's basically the difference. It wasn't even worth mentioning. That's how obvious it was. The teardrop clips over the front edge of the deck lid and uses two Allen set screws. Uh, but the other one is magnetic. There are only just a couple of items that you see on the round magnetic antenna. Over the last few episodes, it's been on the stage car. Um, is he writing instructions for how to install it, too? <laughs> well, I, the, That's some detail. We were right texting there. back and forth, and I said, are, is one of them magnetic? And he goes, yeah. And then the other one, you screw in. So uh, it says they also hold up the prop license plate a lot on this episode. This one is a metal plate, but you'll see it on the front and back, and it's pretty good. So that's everything he has. What I'm going to commit to you and this audience is that after we're done, I'm going to watch this show and uh, pull some clips from it. But I'm pretty you didn't sure. You clips, did you? I got one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one that's just sucking wind on this episode. SEMA was tough. And, and we you have stuff. To, I got stuff to do tomorrow, too. Here's the, here's the clip, though. You'll like this. An old man sure gives me a strange feeling, Luke. How about the daughter? <laughs> She gives me a feeling, too. It just ain't quite so strange. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's the only clip I would have recognized, because I did chuckle when it happened. But that was before the 19-minute mark when I couldn't watch anymore. While I was waiting to unload a trailer, I found the show on Daily Motion. I started listening, and I, I, that one made me laugh. So, Dear listeners, it's not our fault. There's been a lot going on lately. We promise we'll make you a better show next time. This has been a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> it just has remember we don't make any money on this show well we're, we're gonna get better at that <laughs> we're, based on the number of people that i met at sema that just truly went out of their way to say thanks for it but i we owe them something we owe them oh those 12 people are awesome those 12 i think i think it was 13 but two of them might have been the same guy that's true Anyway, HelloFresh, thank you for coming back. Everybody, if you want to support this show, support the people that advertise in this show because that truly is how we make money and how we pay the people that make this show and video all possible. That's truly from the heart. I spent three days, two and a half days, with Bernie and his wonderful wife, Anita, huffling around the SEMA show, getting a lot of work done. I love those people, and I want to keep paying them. That's for sure. And Michael and Kirk for, for making all the awesome videos that we do. But. I think we have come to the conclusion of this one, Mike, because there's just not a lot else to do. <laughs> not unless you want us to go off on one of those tangents people either love or hate. If, if you've got one, I'm all ears. No, no, it's good. We it's are, good. I still got a pack for my trip tomorrow. <laughs> oh, well, uh, you can at least tell us that. Where are you going tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow I fly to Sacramento. 
get into Freiburger's 69 Mustang Mach 1, the disgusting, oh, yeah. and then drive to Washington, where we'll f- begin filming episode 75 of Roadkill, which is back to Dirtfish with a whole lot of cool Roadkill cars. So, psyched about it. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's awesome. Is a... Uh... No, really, I'm kidding you. That's not happening. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was I'm a kidding. very no no i'm kidding it, it is happening we're, we're driving there i'm not that smooth uh okay and you're telling the truth now because now yeah, i'm yeah, also yeah. Like, okay no, no we really are driving there it's gonna be great that will be awesome can you tell yeah. what, what cars are gonna be there other than the disgusting oh god i forget nascar low um oh yeah general mayhem um, Bob was going, but we just broke it again during wheelies, so it's not going. You were going to try to dirt fish Bob? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to... Re- so pilot transport is really cool, and, and they haul the roadkill cars. Um, I was going to race Bob against the pilot truck. You know, not with the trailer on it, just the tractor part of it. Uh-huh. I was going to race Bob, and then we were going to race the pilot truck around there. Um, but then Bob broke again. That so would be awesome. Happening. Yeah, it would have been cool. What about the Ronson? Uh, I forget what else is going, but it, it's going to be cool. I think LaFonda's going. That should be fun. LaFonda. What about the Rotson? Uh, Busted. I but it was on display at SEMA. I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. I. You never know. That's if it's been broken run since run. the last shoot, and he's a transmission. Oh, man. So General Mayhem is still in Hellcat form, right? Yeah. Yeah, it should be virtually undrivable. Um, given that there's no traction control and it has 700 horsepower and we're driving on gravel. Not that I don't have faith in you. I do. It's going to be tough to top what you did last time. That was freaking awesome. But uh, I don't know. I'll, we have more cars this time. I'll so. bet you will. I'll bet you will. And we're there two days instead of one day. So I, I I feel good about this. And last time, didn't you have a Subaru or something? Uh, was it a Subaru? I kind of remember uh, like a Subaru Legacy or a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We had a Subaru. Yeah. yeah, which was, because it's gravel, everything slides, uh, even a front-wheel drive Subaru. It was fun. Mm. That that does sound good. I I am looking forward to that one. Me too. Um, oh, I went drifting in a Cobra at SEMA. Nice. Yeah. That actually was pretty fun. Although there were three cars. One of them was a purpose-built drift car, and I was not in that one. I was in, like, the normal, hey, come buy our really nice kit Cobra, just like everybody can buy. You know what? Those cars don't like to drift. They like to go. Oh. They like to hook up and gutch, just go. So, and the guy driving it was a was a stunt driver, uh, but he had. I'm pretty sure he had clearly been told don't blow the motor up, and he didn't. So it was every now and then it was a good slide or a good drift. I mean it was fun, but at no point was it even scary. Right. Yeah, I would like to have the scary ride next time. A couple of years ago, I got in Tanner Faust's uh, Ford. I think it was a Festiva, maybe. And it was his, uh, I think it was his rally car, 600 horsepower, turboed four, all wheel drive, mm-hmm. zero to 60 in like 2.9 seconds. Thing was a rocket. And I told, and he, he doesn't know me at all. I've, I've only met him like once. And I was like, hey, um, that last guy that got out of your car looked like he was going to vomit. Try to make me vomit, please, because that would be awesome. And I'm pretty sure he tried. Like we were getting after it we drifted every inch of that ford out front display dude can drive was, too oh god yeah yeah hey um do you know anything about the american top gear coming back in uh, some other form uh no i mean i've read everything you've read that like it's antron brown and no not that one what? i mean with with rutledge and tanner and adam like oh um i don't know anything i can actually say oh, okay which means I don't know anything. I'm just okay. trying to sound cool. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be good. I saw your picture on the SEMA wall. Uh, you Rutledge or uh, and um, Casey. Really? Yeah, I was up there. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, it said, uh, "Come to eBay Motors." It said, "Like Rutledge and Teams awesome Mustang debut." Oh, uh-huh. I'll send you a picture. Sweet. You look cool. Anyway, thank you, everybody. I have found the link: kfshowshirts.com. That's really what it is. Go there and buy an awesome shirt. <laughs> and we're going to have a Christmas shirt. And uh, I promise you, uh, I will be better prepared in the next show. And maybe, what, now what's your roadkill schedule You guys here? don't buy any t-shirts, I won't be better prepared. Just saying. That's uh, that's, that's where we are. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. How many roadkills are you filming left this year? 
uh, I think we've got three to shoot, two or three left wow. before the end of the year. So busy, busy, but they're really good. Like they're, they're, they're really good ones. You guys are going to dig it. Everybody will. Um, all right, man. Well, it's been good talking to you. Do you want to give out your social media contact info? I think it does help. Go ahead. Does it? Yeah. It okay. Does. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Finnegan999, on Twitter at Mike Finnegan999, and on Facebook at Mike.Finnegan forward slash news. Cool. And if you like to get this show in old fashioned form on the website with show notes, go to the musclecarplace.com, click on the Kibbe and Finnegan show icon. Otherwise, get in iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio. And for the love of God, share it with your friends and buy the ads for the people that sponsor this show. Please. All righty. <laughs> I will see you later, Mike. Thank you so much. Everybody, thank you. Later, homie.